So I decided to do a review of Douglas Murray's latest book, The War on the West. <clears throat> I'm smiling because it's nice to actually review a book I enjoyed reading. I have to suffer while reading White Fragility, and I'm sure I'll suffer again reading certain other books in the near future. <clears throat> but read them I must if I am to forge an opinion on them. Now, I consider myself left-wing on many issues, and Douglas Murray is a staunch conservative. And there's many a conservative political commentator I disagree with, especially the ones that flat out deny climate change, for example. <clears throat> If Murray's first two books, uh, last two books, should I say, The Strange Death of Europe and The Madness of Crowds were good, <clears throat> this takes it to a whole new level. It's written in compendious sentences, so it's quite easy to understand despite covering complex issues. That was deliberate, so anyone, including the general public, can follow it. Smart move because he's writing about some of the most important issues of our time. And it's no good writing in scholarly fashion, so only a professor uh, could understand it. There's no way a book like that would appeal to the general public. <clears throat> now, the theme of the book is something most of us are well aware of. The self-loathing, anti-Western, far-left, trying to tear society down. <clears throat> They've decided a good tactic to achieve their revolution is to attack everything about Western civilization, attack the culture, the institutions, <clears throat> and even the people themselves, as Robin D'Angelo did in her book, White Fragility. Demoralize them by saying everything about you and your society is evil and bad. Now, this book gave me goosebumps at times. Murray made me feel proud to be Western and proud of our achievements. I read this and realised our society and civilization has given the world so much. America is possibly the most successful country in history. Britain and other European civilizations have given us some of the most great achievements humanity has to offer. Yes, we've done unspeakable atrocities, but so has every other civilization as well. We, as much as anyone else, have a lot to be immensely proud of. Now, he mentions our scientific, uh, mathematical, artistic <coughs> and musical achievements. He references back, Michelangelo and other giants of Western culture. But most importantly for me was how he exposed the left's heroes in this book. Now our statues are pulled down for even their most tenuous links to slavery and colonialism. Well, Mary tells us what a virulent racist and anti-Semite Karl Marx was and he tells us how he was very pro-slavery and had a lot of positive things to say about the transatlantic slave trade in America. <clears throat> okay who is a French postmodernist and another hero of the left that was often cited. Murray tells us that he was actually a despicable paedophile. He used to go to Africa to rape and sexually abuse young black boys, where he would do so over gravestones in graveyards. Now, specifically Africa, because <coughs> he thought he could get away with it over there in a way that he wouldn't be able to in France. And on top of that, he actually called for the age of consent in France to be lowered to 12. Yet these heroes of the left remain unscathed. No one suggests erasing their names from history. The Marxists and the postmodernists want to tear all statues down, it seems, apart from those of the racist Marx and the paedophile occult. And uncovering this in this book was a masterstroke which showcases Murray's genius. It's also shown that to a large extent they don't really give a damn about racism, colonialism or any of that and they don't really care what these historical figures did or didn't do or thought 
or anything else. All that matters is are they useful or not. Now, attacking, say, Churchill and Jefferson is useful because it helps them pull society down and achieve their political goals. Marx and Foucault are useful as heroes. So regardless of how evil or bad they were, they get a free pass. They get to remain on their pedestals. I don't think Marxists anytime soon are going to erase Marx because he was a nasty racist. They'll still champion him. <clears throat> now, I mentioned this to those banging on about pulling statues down. And they always go quiet, it seems. It's end of conversation. Perhaps that's because they've no come, come back. Now we've exposed how disingenuous they are. Now, I suggest you all go out and read this book because it does exactly what it says on the tin. It gives you knowledge and ammunition to fight back against the resentful, anti-Western, self-loathing far left. So the next time they say this guy or that guy should be cancelled or has a statue pulled down because he had racist views, you can say, well, Karl Marx was a vicious racist. Does that mean we're going to erase him too? Now, I'll finish with a paragraph what was about three quarters of the way into the book because I found it incredibly profound. <laughs> It is one of the saddest realisations we have as a species, not just that everything is transitory, but that everything, particularly everything we love and into which love has been poured, is fragile. And that just as the line between civilization and barbarism is paper thin, so it is a miracle that anything at all survives, even the fragility of all things, plus the evil and carelessness of which men are capable. 